Well, let me share a little of my story. I'm Richard McNair. I'm, the, uh, I'm a pastor, and I'm the international director of World Comp International. As a boy, uh, I came from a very dysfunctional family. There was no love in our family. Uh, no one expressed love at any time. There were five of us, and uh, we all had different problems. My brother had a, a spirit of rage in his life, and uh, I was a, a very shy and inward person. And my three sisters, uh, they were all pregnant before they got married, and we all were desperate for love. In the, I went in the Army in 1965, and uh, immediately in the Army, I got, fell in with a group of people who were into drugs. And so for those two years in the Army, I just became a, uh, a drug addict. And by the time I got out, I was an alcoholic and a, a daily drug user. It was during the 60s and uh, when uh, the hippie movement was big, and it was a big subculture. So as soon as I got out of the Army, I went headlong into the drug subculture. And uh, for four years, I was selling drugs, just completely gone, loaded all the time, and uh, involved in all kinds of things. We were thieves, we were drug addicts, we were doing anything we could to make money to sustain our drug habits. And then in 1969, I, I went to Alaska just uh, to sell drugs, and uh, during that time I was arrested in a, in a gigantic drug sting, and uh, went to jail, and uh, it was there in jail that the Lord began to really uh, speak to me. And uh, there were a lot of Christians in my family, but I hated them all. They were very judgmental and kind of Christians you just don't like to hang out with. And so when, I, when Jesus began to move in my soul, I didn't know what was happening. Actually, I felt like I was having a nervous breakdown. I, I was getting very emotional. And uh, I'd never been emotional. I was just like an emotional rock. And uh, so I began to get emotional and didn't know what was happening to me. But it was the Lord dealing with me. And uh, on a particular occasion, uh, I, I really didn't like a lot of social settings. And I was in a cell block with 28 men. And so I wanted to get out of there. So during lunch hour, I threw a meatball at one of the guards, which was a real no-no. And so I got, ended up in solitary confinement. And I liked it there, you know. Um, so during, during that solitary confinement, and I was laying half asleep one morning and I heard an audible voice. And uh, the audible voice said, I am the Lord, what are you gonna do about that? And, but I knew it was Jesus. I didn't know how I knew it was Jesus. I just knew absolutely for certain, you know what, this is Jesus speaking to me. And it was disturbing to me because I didn't know what I was gonna do about that. I didn't want to become a Christian. And uh, so it was not till a month later when I was out of solitary confinement, I was on my way to lunch one day and uh, I had a sudden urge to turn into an empty room. And as soon as I got in the empty room, I just uh, began to break. I mean, I began to sob. And I described it like I was like a watermelon hitting the floor and my just insides just opened up before the Lord and I was sobbing and sobbing and um, uncontrollably. And so I was in there for a long time during the lunch hour, just uh, crying out and, uh, to the Lord. And because of the, there was some Christianity in my family, a lot of Christian people. So I knew how, what to do. So I opened my heart to the Lord. I asked him to forgive me and cleanse me. And just, he came into my life with such power uh, at that encounter. And so the next day I woke up in the morning and I was a totally different person. I mean, I felt different. Everything about me was different. And uh, for me, uh, accepting the Lord was like being shot out of a cannon. I mean, there was no gradual, you know, working your way into it. I just was immediately a transformed person. And so within a week, I was uh, sharing with other inmates what had happened to me in my experience with Christ. And then within a month, we started a Bible study. and. Uh, a whole bunch of people. There was a little mini revival in the prison. Before I left, uh, there was about 65 guys that came to Christ. And um, I was sentenced to six years in prison, uh, but I only did one year. Uh, 
At, at 11 and a half months, I, I had my first review with the parole board. And so I went before this review and uh, I just gave them my testimony. I said, you know, well, I've had an encounter. They asked me, you know, are you, are you, have you been reformed? And I said, well, I've had this encounter with Jesus Christ and it's radically changed my life. And they listened to me and I didn't think anything of it. At the time, I wasn't even interested in getting out because for me, being in prison was like being in a monastery. And I read through the Bible three times in just six months, and I was enjoying, you know, fellowship with other inmates, and it was just a great place to be. Uh, another thing was I was safe away from uh, my drug addictions. But I gave them my testimony, and just a week later, the next thing you know, I'm out. They came and opened the door, they let me out, and then I had my Peter experience. You know, Peter. Uh, said, I'll, I'll never deny you, and he denied the Lord three times. I went back into town in Fairbanks, Alaska, to witness to my friends, because we I was part of a big uh, community of drug addicts. And so I was going to tell them about Jesus. And I got to the door, knocked on the door of, of a house of a friend, and when they opened the door, they were having a party. And I meant to go in there and say, hey, something's happened to me, but that isn't what happened. I walked in the door, and it was like an out-of-body experience for me. I just got loaded. I just immediately grabbed a hold of drugs and just like, wow, I'm back, you know? And uh, the next morning, it was early in the morning, I had to catch a plane back to Seattle to report to my parole officer. And I was sitting there by myself. And in the morning, everyone was asleep. And the Lord spoke to me again. Second, only two times in my life, I've heard an audible voice. And the Lord spoke to me and said, now, you choose. Are you, is it going to be this? And I looked around and here was my old drug buddies. Or is it gonna be me? And I said out loud, Lord, you know I love you, but I don't think I can do that. I, you know, this, this need for drugs is so strong in me. So five minutes later, the door just exploded off the hinges and all these state policemen came in the room, came, and I was the only one awake, so they came straight up to me, pointed his pistol on my face and said, I dare you to move. And so I'm sitting there, and the Lord said to me, don't mess with me. I mean, this was like, I knew this was God. And I was immediately handcuffed, put in the police car, and I was going back out to the prison I had just left two and a half days before. And I just began sobbing, you know, repenting and just asking God for forgiveness. And I got back to the prison, and uh, I was in this holding cell with a bunch of other guys, but I was a wreck. I mean, I was just on my knees praying, and I didn't care, you know, who was listening or watching and asking God for forgiveness. And then the next day, they came and opened the door and said, all right, the charges have been dropped, and then you get out of Alaska and never come back. And so I went straight out of Alaska. I had one Bible and a, uh, a pair of pants. That's all I owned in the world, and went straight out of Alaska, uh, back down to Seattle, joined the Jesus Movement, and everything's unfolded since that time. So that's my testimony. That's what's happened in my life. And in three, within three years, I was a pastor in a local church. I had, had no formal training, except you know just uh, the training of teaching Bible studies from the back of my Thompson Chain Reference Bible. And uh, you know my life in ministry began, and. Uh, you know, tremendous, the Lord has been so awesome in my life. He, the very first revelation I had after I became a Christian was I was sitting with my back to the wall in a private room, and I had a vision. The vision was a feather that was floating in the air. You've seen that. Maybe you've seen Forrest Gump, you know, where the feather floats up in the air. I saw this feather floating up in the air, and I was kind of curiously looking at it, and the Lord spoke to me and brought to my mind John chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. The wind comes, but no man knows where it comes from or where it's going, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And the Lord said, you're going to be like this feather in the air. I'm going to pick you up and take you where you don't even know you're going. And I just want you to let go of all of your own plans and trust me. And that's what I did. And he has taken it from there.